What's up, Mercenary? J. Christian Gary of Focus Fights Audio speaking. How you doing? I'm doing all right, dude. Just wanted to basically ask. You fought 22 times inside either the Bellator cage or the Ryzen Fighting Federation ring. With this fight coming up against Clay Collier, do you think it's a bit of a change of scenery coming into this new environment with the PFL? Um, definitely. You know, it's a new environment, new <clears throat> new work partners, um, new house, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, everyone's had welcoming arms, loving welcoming arms. So um, it's been a very comfortable transition. And, you know, what better place to start off the first fight in Saudi Arabia? Uh, I see. Now, another question I want to ask, considering your experience, you know, fighting in Ryzen, obviously you haven't fought there since New Year's Eve 2021. I mean, would you welcome the opportunity of fighting there again if the PFL or Bellator let you? Definitely, man. I've 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 been uh, thinking about it 24-7, you know. Uh, last, last purchase was a samurai suit. This time I want an R34, so... Um, <laughs> Definitely got to get back to Japan soon. I see. Trying to be something other than Sasuke, Black Ninja, <laughs> right? Yeah, you I know, see. first fight, I had to make a collectible memorabilia piece for myself. Now it's it's working toys, you know, and I'm a big car enthusiast. So, you know, there that's the Godzilla. So the R34 it is. Mm -hmm. And one more question before I pass it off to the rest of the panel. Clay Call, you're basically saying that he a gangster and that he can outmaneuver you when it comes down to this fight. I know you got your fans, you got your people. How do you think that this fight with Mr. Collier, the boxing veteran, will go? Um, I think it's going to be an entertaining fight, you know. Um, it's just, for me, it's always the big question is if he's going to come at me or not, you know. If 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 he comes at me wild, then I'm gonna have to get adjusted and and kind of figure some things out. But if not, um, I'm gonna just go in there and do what I do best. You know, let's kick ass, take names. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna have fun. I see. Other than that, man, good luck. I mean, I shouldn't Thank say you. good luck. I should say best of skill to you on Saturday Thank afternoon, you. man. Dylan. What's up, AJ? Appreciate the time, man. Um, obviously, the MMA community is absolutely pumped for this fight. However, you've been in a lot of significant fights, a lot of fights where people felt like this. Um, does this, does your excitement match kind of what's going on, or does it just feel like another fight for you? Uh, definitely, you know, the excitement of just being in Saudi alone, you know, having a Middle Eastern background, Lebanese, um, the entire trip in totality is just surreal, you know, so I'm just embracing it, all the culture, um, the new promotion. I mean, we, we've got a, all kinds of special things. I want to put things out there, but there's going to be all kinds of special things that happen through this show. So uh, for me, it's just more motivation, you know, more motivation and uh, the pressure. You know, I love the pressure. So we, diamonds aren't built overnight. They they do well under pressure. That's how they're created. And, uh, yeah, I love it. I enjoy it and I embrace it. Definitely, man. And, uh, you know, back at Bellator 301, I believe it was in Chicago, uh, you got your hand raised over Sid Outlaw that night. Um, we were talking after the fight in the press room and you said, you know, we all kind of knew, we all knew nothing in terms of what was going to happen from there and what was going to, you know, go next for you fighters. Um, obviously, now we know what happened. How has this transition been for yourself and what's this fight week like compared to all of the ones that you had under a Bellator banner? Um, like I said, it's been a very smooth transition, you know, PFL, they've, they've been nothing but great to the fighters. They've had welcoming arms. Um, we still have some staff that's here helping out and just kind of working side by side with everybody. And, uh, it's still, it's still like a big family, you know, everybody's still just very loving. Everybody's here to help out and, uh, make each other comfortable, you know, make a, a good, healthy work place and work environment. That's great to hear, man. Thank you. Euro. Hi, Jay. Thank you for your time. And sorry if this was us already. My audio kind of went out for a bit, but the lightweight tournament is set to begin in April. Is that something you envision yourself being a part of, or are you kind of seeing this on a day by day basis? Um, with this fight leading up to this weekend, um, 
I'm not quite sure what what will happen. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to being a champion again. So, um, if it's a tournament, four fights in a year, that's definitely at 55s. If if we're gonna do one off shows, big pay per view events like this, um, I wouldn't mind going back to 45s. I've always said I want to be champ champ. So, um, we just I, I got to get through Clay Collard. You know, I can't overlook him. Um, obviously he knows what it's like to be in the finals of that tournament. Um. Him and myself have been there. So uh, this, to me, this is for the world title, you know. The the champion retired, and Clay Collard's the one that retired him. So in my eyes, I, I feel this is why we're starting off the show. You know, this is the championship matchup that everybody wants to see. Fair enough. And I saw that you mentioned the R34 there. That's also my dream car. So now that it's legal out here in the States, well, what was your reaction when that happened? Um, you know, it's crazy. My boy actually had one before they were legal. Don't ask how, but he had it. And, uh, I didn't get the ride in it, but my buddy was on FaceTime with me and he took a pull. He was in Hollywood, took a pull down the street and literally dude, the connection just started breaking up because of how fast he was going. And I was like, Oh, but, uh, my cousin actually just purchased one too. He, he got one imported. So, uh, yeah, we're trying to be our boys. Awesome. Best of luck with your fight and best of luck with purchasing that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cash. <laughs> How you doing, AJ? Oh, I'm doing good. How about yourself? Your skill I'm good, man. Your skill set as a fighter is very well rounded. You have the ability to submit or finish opponents on your feet. What's your mentality going into this fight versus Clay? Um I would say my mentality going into this fight, I haven't really got to utilize my boxing skills much at the 155 pound division um and i like to beat people at their game so um like we all know clay collard's a brawler he's a boxer he's he's coming in to make this fight nitty and gritty so uh i'm gonna go out there play his game for a little bit and hopefully i beat him at his game if not then we already know what the ace in the hole is take him down choke him out yes sir good luck to you this fight thank you steve hey jay how you doing today I'm doing well. I'm good. Uh, good. Um, you touched on it a little bit there. Clay's got a very interesting style when he gets into the cage, one that makes him stand out in a big way. What are your thoughts on just the way he fights? Um, he's a go-getter, you know. Any anybody that's willing to to take a punch and give one is is a man you got to look out for. Um, he reminds me a lot of Derek Campos, who I fought third round in in the tournament. Um, or no, second round. I fought Campos second round, but uh, yeah, I was landing punches and and he was just taking them, you know. And sometimes you're you're not gonna be able to finish somebody on the feet. They got a tough chin and they they can weather that storm. So you got to mix it up, you know. And that's the big key of being a mixed martial artist is being up, being able to realize okay things. He he's still withholding, so let's switch up the game a little bit. Obviously, you mentioned there take him down, check him out, but um. You're someone that's so technical. How do you think that kind of stylistically matches up with his style? Um, I would just say my style in general. Um, I'm just very well-rounded, so it's kind of a bad matchup for anybody. Wherever your weakness is, um, periodically through, through the fight, I'll expose your weakness, you know, whether it's on the feet, on the ground, or wrestling. Um we're just going to continue to pick at you until until I see a, a loophole to expose you with. And away from your fight a little bit, I know your guy, Anthony Taylor, just had a big fight announced taking on Gabe Silver, the son of Anderson Silver. What are your thoughts on that? That's phenomenal, dude. He's 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 get his ass in the gym, though. He's been lacking lately. <laughs> he, had a, he had some injuries and whatnot, so I'll give him a break. But, yeah, he's uh, – He's been working, man. You know, you you see you see his work ethic in the gym. He's been putting in the work, and uh, the re the results have been there. Thank you, AJ. Best of luck at the weekend. Thank you, Mike. Hey, AJ. Uh, really excited to see you get back in there and to start off twenty twenty four. What is the pride factor coming into this fight? Obviously, you know, you paid your respect to Clay Collard earlier, but with the PFL, the belts are the champs. Uh, you know, branding that it is. What sense of pride do you have coming into this event? Um, well, it being the only non-title fight, um, it's a 
the non only non title fight and the opening of the show. It's it's a uh, it's an honor, you know. It's you know the it's it's like the closing of the show. The main event is just as important as the first fight. You kind of set the tone. So uh, to be the first fight of the night, I feel they expect high expectations. You know, especially on the first pay per view. Um, it's gonna be a fun night. You know, that's that's one thing I will say. And I'm just I'm honored to be here in this present moment. It definitely will be a great fight, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself on your end or on Clay's end, but have you sat back and imagined or maybe even for a millisecond thought about if this fight goes one way or another, a potential A.J. McKee, Clay Collard, PFL world title fight at the end of the tournament later this year? Hey, it's a possibility, you know. Um, if that 155 pound tournament comes around and, and that's what we sign up for and everything works out, then yeah, we'll get that done. Um, and yeah, you know, everybody loves to see a second battle, you know, um, you, you kind of figure people out, you become familiar with their craft, what they're good at and you know what to work for. So, um, I'm sure after a first fight, we'll both kind of be dialed in on each other a bit more for a second one. So I'd, I'd honor anybody with the second fight, but my goal is to always make sure nobody wants to fight me twice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, man. Ronald. This is Ronald E. Smith. AJ, every fight, some fighters take their own way, own way to get in that zone, to get in that zen. But also sometimes fighters use music to get them in there. And, and any turn during this camp, has there been a certain song that really has gotten you in a good mode to into this fight? Honestly, I haven't been listening to music that much this camp. It's been more of uh, motivational uh, speakers and stuff. So AT's been a big, big thing on my uh, Spotify list. I've been I've been on that every day when I run and just kind of dialing in, you know, motivation. New year, new me. Um, it's 2024, you know what I mean? It's the years are going by, you know, I'm entering my prime and I call this the year of Kobe. So I've dedicated my life really to just dialing back in and, giving it my monk mode and go full potential. And what about Kobe that really inspires you? Man, it's it's just like the car scene in Los Angeles. You know, it's kind of a part of our culture um, growing up in SoCal. Um, being a Laker, Shaquille and Kobe, that was like the duo. So I've uh, – that Mamba mentality, man, you just got to give it your all. And when you think that's literally all you've got, you give it some more and you don't stop. You just keep going. Um countless hours in the gym day in day out you know even when fights aren't happening you know still put it in those countless hours right after I had a uh, staff I was still back in the gym the following week just put it in work after work so that's where I feel you make the most growth and uh yeah that's that mamba mentality thank you AJ.